My correspondent Shimon Ray, who's joining us from the spot. Shimon, give us the latest. Well, uh, Shivani, firstly, uh, there are two things. One is whether Abhay Singh Chautala, Lalit Banot, uh, they will be allowed to vote today or not. Uh, they were in the electoral college, and there are uh, within IOA there are two opinions. One opinion is strongly saying they should not vote at all. This can uh, bring a lot of dispute as well as problem for the IOA in future because they are tainted, they are charge sheeted. Uh, also, uh, we saw in the meeting uh, Jagdish Taitler, uh, uh, the, these are some of the names which are, uh, which are objectionable. Having said that, uh, the second thing that has come uh, into notice is uh, the inner bickerings still going on as they are about to vote. Uh, when I talk to the treasurer of the All India Football Federation, the All India Football Federation has been barred from uh, g g uh, giving their votes. Uh, they are not allowed uh, on right. technical grounds. Uh, they say that they fulfill all the criteria, but when I was taking the interview, the IOA outgoing Vice President uh, Narendra Batra, whom you interviewed right now, uh, he, uh, he, he in fact uh, uh, came in between and uh, stopped uh, him from saying anything. And right. then he said that he is not eligible at all because he did not fulfill the criteria. Now, All India Football Federation is one of the lo uh, lo uh, oldest f uh, federation of IOA. And if it is not allowed to vote, then questions will come up as to the validity of this entire election process. Absolutely. Shimon, you're raising a very important point, the validity of these elections. And there have been questions on that. But let me take that question about Chotala and Bhanot voting in these elections. Of course, according to the rules, they can. They're part of the Electoral College. But Mr. BVP Rao from Clean Sports India is with me in the studio. Also, our consulting editor, Borea Majumdar, joins us from Kolkata. Mr. Rao, it is not a very good sign or, uh, you know, not a very good uh, signal to send out that somebody as tainted as Chotala and Banod still get to vote. Yeah, that is one. <coughs> the first thing is that it doesn't look very nice. Two charge-sheeted officials who are bought to contest election, they have to be there. It is very, technically, maybe they, are, they, they may be allowed. The information we have is that the IOC, who is overseeing the elections, have in fact yeah, allowed them to go but, ahead. But what does the message shows to the world? They want to show a message that we are still in control. Hmm. But I know that their, their control will be slowly losing, but they just want to show it. And this is one point. But the point which is very, your correspondent Shuman Roy has raised is that I do not know details about the All India Football Federation, why they have uh, prohibited from voting today. But today, SGM, according to their own constitution, where Narendra Bhatra says everything is all right, any SGM, today's is a special general body meeting, should vote on by majority members of the Olympic sports. Right. Today, I can give guarantee to you today, without counting the members there, that the majority today in the special general body meeting where the election is taking place and the constitution amendment is taking place, majority are non olympic spot. Hmm. That itself they are violating their own provisions. You had uh, written about Mr. Chotala and Bhano to the IOC and this question about the majority of Olympic sports has come up before as well. Borea, what do you think? Uh, uh, the message that we are receiving is that the IOC has given the elections a go ahead. They are observing very closely. Could there be a problem, could there be a spanner in the works if the majority is found to be skewed? You know, it can be a matter that can be taken to court. I mean, Mr. Rao knows that very well. Uh, there are people uh, who can take the matter to court if they feel so. But I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued with what, what Shumon said. I mean, uh, when Mr. Batra actually said uh, to Shumon that these people are not eligible, they have not fulfilled the criterion. I'm interested in knowing what are the criterion that they have not fulfilled because All India Football Federation, especially in the light of the fact that India is hosting the Under-17 World Cup two years down the line, they are a very important association. I mean, how can you sort of say they can't vote, they have not fulfilled the criterion, then tell us what are the criterion they have not fulfilled and why is that, uh, uh, that the case? Secondly, Mr. Rao is raising an important point that it doesn't send a good signal with uh, Lalit Bhanot and Chautala out there. If you are not contesting, by your own volition, I mean, just stay away. By your own accord, you are not contesting, you've given up because of certain taint, uh, the whole world knows you are charge sheeted, stay away, because we don't want you there. I mean, it sends out a wrong signal that this is actually a reforms process and a process of cleansing. It is not sending out the best signals, because ultimately right. you can think or you can interpret that this is all happening by proxy. So we would want a clean slate, Srivani. We would want a clean slate to start afresh. That I don't think is happening fully, but at the same time, 
you know, if, if the athletes get empowered, whatever way you get empowered, because reforms cannot happen overnight, it's a, it's a periodic process, as Mr. Rao knows, so that yeah. I welcome. Absolutely, we've won a major battle getting Mr. Chautala and uh, Bhanot out, but there is lots still le left to be done. Shimon, when can we expect the results to come out? Well, uh, the meeting, as we speak, the meeting is going on. They are about to vote. Uh, well, having said that, uh, the, the, the election is in some way is over because uh, they just have to ratify uh, the constitution and actually uh, the general body has to give its stamp to already elected, if I can say so, uh, Ramachandran uh, as the president because uh, there is no contest, there is right. no uh, no right. opponent here. Uh, this this, this uh, open goal where Ramachandran, uh, Anil Khanna and uh, Rajiv Bhatia are there and they will be uh, elected unopposed. This uh, election is only going to be ratified. Uh, these uh, They are going to vote, that, that's going to happen now. But there is, since there is no contest, uh, even a 10, 10 vote or 20 vote will also ensure the smooth passage for the, uh, for the uh, top post. So clearly, this is going to, in hours or so, it will be clear whether it is ratified. And after that, the most important point is whether Chautala and Banot gets to vote and whether they vote or not. Because this can actually uh, invite IOC to pr probably take notice and take further action as well. Right. Chatala and Bhanod are in fact voting. They have been given the go ahead. Uh, but uh, there are still lots of questions pending on these elections. Uh, as Shimon was saying, this is a unanimous uh, election. There's, th th there's no opposition to the candidate. So there's really nothing that uh, one can g expect to go wrong in these elections. Ramachandran will be the next president of the IOA. Mr. Rao, you wanted to make a point. You know, what I wanted to make a point is that there is 150 or 60 people sitting there. Hmm. But there are so many irregularities as you have uh, noticed yesterday. Yeah. Uh, John Kersing from uh, Meghala Olympic Association has raised that the nominations were all collected by a few individuals and they settled their people at various places and then gave it to the election commission. Mm -hmm. Neither election commission raised objection nor any of the members except John Kersing today. I heard from uh, inside information that John raised it and we congratulate John from our uh, organization that there should be more and more people in IOA General Assembly. They should talk what is truth and uh, they, they should take forward. And I'd also request you to uh, interview John when he comes out of it and then make it a a kind of a uh, information to the audience, uh, your audience across the country, that what are the irregularities a member who is sitting there thinks, right. which has been rejected right. by the judge. And I also like to raise a point, these election commissions, these retired judges are not doing their job. Uh, we have noticed in our archery election, we have noticed yeah. in IOA election, they're all kind of hand in glow kind of judges they choose. All so, right. this is one point we should take care. All right, Borea, I'll give the final word to you. It is an extremely important day for Indian sports. We just witnessed uh, two days ago that Indian athletes had to march out without the Indian flag, with no tricolor on their jerseys. We certainly do not want to see a repeat of that. Uh, we can expect the return Absolutely. of for India into the Olympic fold to be smooth from here on now. Yeah, I mean, the inside information that I was receiving was that the IOC straight after will inform the president and India is expected back, you know, ASAP. So that for me is a, is a very important development. For me, it's about the athletes. Mr. Rao uh, and Clean Sports India, I'm, I'm sure will want, want to continue to work for the, the reforms process and further cleansing. I would want to work as well. All of us will want to work as well from the media. But the fact of the matter is, let's empower our athletes. Finally, from 5th of December 2012 to today, it's been a period of shame. Finally, hopefully, it's coming to an end, at least partly so. No, no process is perfect, but we've got to keep working. I mean, what, what Mr. Rao is telling us, he's also raising questions about the judges, about the judiciary. These are alarming questions, Shivani. We are not in a position to judge these, but if there are evidence that he thinks he can put out before the media, we would be very, very happy to take this as a crusade because ultimately we want Indian sport cleansed and we want reform. We'll keep taking this story forward, of course. Keep watching headlines today for the latest from the IOA elections and Ramachandran. Srinivasan's uh, brother, a strange brother, all set to take over as the IOA president. Uh, Shimon Boria and Mr. B.V.P. Rao, thanks a lot for joining us.